Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in our report, we're here in a French orchard where warmer winters are a growing problem for fruit producers. Unfortunately, if there's a frost in the next few weeks, all the flowers will burn and we won't have any fruit this summer. First, let's check the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, which shows that Europe had its third warmest January on record, with temperatures for the month 2.2 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. On a global scale, there was a lot of variability last month. And you can see on this map how northern Russia, Afghanistan and Pakistan were colder than average. Then in the eastern United States, Canada and Europe, temperatures were higher than usual. Now, right now is an interesting time of the year to look at sea ice at the poles. And let's start with the Arctic, where sea ice extent was 4% below average for January, the third lowest level on record. And then around Antarctica, we saw the lowest sea ice extent on record for January, 31% below the 1991 to 2020 average. Now to our report, and this month we're focusing on research to find the fruit trees of the future. Many European varieties need a long, cold winter to produce good fruit in summer, and climate change is disrupting their natural cycles. I went to southwest France to find out more. Scientist Benedict Venden is searching for varieties of apple, cherry, apricot and peach able to thrive in a warmer world. Hello, I'm just cutting some branches. Shall we have a look around? So, on this research orchard near Bordeaux, she compares five different varieties from each species. This one, for example, it has had its dose of cold and it sensed the arrival of spring, so it started to bud, while this one is still dormant and it still needs the cold before it's ready to come out for spring. Her long-term goal is to identify the traits in different trees that can allow us to create varieties for the year 2050 and beyond. The problem we have now is that with the increase in winter temperatures, the fruit tree's requirements for cold are no longer met. This means that there is no longer enough cold in winter, and so flowering is irregular, with major problems in production. It's a long-term issue. This graphic shows how average winter temperatures in Europe have risen since the 1950s, and the average is projected to rise for the decades to come. At her laboratory, Benedict exposes sample branches to the warm conditions of spring as she seeks to understand how the trees respond to different environmental conditions on a genetic level. She says there's no simple solution. My opinion is that it is better to have a mix of varieties. For example, this variety is very good when there are mild winters but no frost. This one will be good if you have cold winters with frost. So it is better to have a mix of varieties to guarantee production. It complicates things for producers, but it gives them a cushion in case of variations in the climate. Guaranteeing production is one of the biggest challenges facing organic grower Philippe Sviligoy, who lost crops to late frosts two years in a row and fears the same happening again this year. If it's really warm next week, the risk is that the tree will actually start to grow. And the issue here is that when a tree starts, it won't stop. In other words, it has started its cycle. So it can slow down a little bit, but it won't be able to stop. So if we have frost in a few weeks, it'll be too late. There's no ideal solution, but Philippe is already switching varieties and preparing for a warmer planet. This one is an opal. It can tolerate having a little less cold in the winter. This one is a dalinette. It stands up very well to hot summers. So little by little, we're actually adapting our orchards to this climate change. Well, that's all we have time for. You can dig into more detail on this story on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.